There is a lot going on in Manhattan right now. There's always a lot going on in Manhattan. And to talk about some of the biggest issues facing the borough is Manhattan Borough President Mark Levine. Mark, thank you so much for joining us, especially uh, on a Sunday. Thank you, Steph. It's great to be here. Yeah, let's start with um, the big news this week. The plan Mayor Adams announced allowing NYPD officers to involuntarily take mentally ill people off the streets and subways. I want to get your thoughts on the plan, and do you think it'll make New Yorkers feel safer? Well, Steph, we have got to do more for our fellow New Yorkers who are experiencing severe mental illness, who are homeless. And uh, the truth is that they need care and treatment. They need the right housing. They need communities of peers so that they don't feel so isolated. And for many people suffering with severe mental illness, coming in for an evaluation, a psychiatric evaluation, can put them on a better course. But there's still a lot of questions about the mayor's plan. Um, he hasn't said exactly what the criteria will be to determine when someone will be brought in. And then there are questions about what happens after they get to the ER. Our ERs are so overwhelmed right now. And ultimately, we need more psychiatric inpatient beds to serve patients if they need a longer stay. So a lot of questions, but it's clear we have to act. We have to do more to support our fellow New Yorkers who are in crisis. Yeah, I want to ask more about those regulations that you seem to think need to be kind of fleshed out more. Um, what about what are your thoughts on the regulations for the officers who are kind of left in charge of getting these people off our streets? How does that have to happen? And like you said, what other issues need to just be more um, specific in this plan? Well, state law already provides and has for some time for involuntary removal for psychiatric evaluation in a hospital. And generally, that's been understood to be applied when the person is a danger to themselves or others. But how that is defined is still somewhat a question. It's a little bit vague in the state law. And the mayor's made it clear, I think he wants to apply it more broadly, but hasn't exactly said what conditions will trigger this and how they'll train officers who will be on the front lines and EMS workers as well. So it's really important that we have clear guidance on this so that uh, this isn't applied overly broadly or in an unfair way. And again, um, I want to make sure that when patients do come into the hospital that we have the right resources there. We have a terrible shortage of psychiatric staff, especially nurses. Um, we have a shortage of the kind of community-based programs we need to get people uh, back on the right track long term. So uh, this can't be the only part of the conversation. We have uh, much more investments we need to make at every segment of the mental health system in New York City. Yeah, switching gears now, the city also just unveiled uh, some of the first recipients of marijuana retail licenses, several of which will be in your borough, Manhattan. I know you previously spoke about the economic opportunity that could come from cannabis sales. How are you hoping that these licenses will be regulated, and do you think that they'll prove successful in their mission? Well, the big picture, it's really extraordinary that we're moving from prohibition a prohibition that resulted in really inexcusably overly aggressive enforcement, uh, particularly in communities of color, to a system in which uh, sales of cannabis will be regulated and taxed. And so it'll be an economic boon for the city, but also an economic boon for many individuals who themselves have suffered under the war on drugs. And this first stage has been designed specifically to give licenses to people who have been impacted um, by prohibition over the years. Uh, so this this is exciting, but I think that you know we have a challenge of of unregulated stores which have been popping up all over the city, and and we we can't have that because first it's not it's not fair to consumers, it's not fair to the people who have gone through the process of getting a license, uh, so that that's going to have to be reined in. But in the meantime, I'm really excited that the the first license providers are going to be opening soon in Manhattan and around the state. Yeah, I wanted to follow up about those um, current smoke shops, if you will, that we you, you can't miss around the city. There are a lot of them. They are seemingly everywhere. What do you think needs to, needs to happen to those current operations? And from what I understand, those are operating illegally. Is that correct? Yeah, there's no licensed operators yet. So the public should know if you are buying cannabis from a store right now, uh, that is not a permitted licensed operation, and you really don't know what you're putting into your body. One of the big benefits of this regulated regime that's coming into place is that there are really good controls for the quality of the product, um, as you would want for anything you're putting into your body. 
but but no, those those can't be allowed to continue long term. Uh, it's the sheriff's department in New York City who regulates tobacco sales, so presumably uh, they'll be in charge here. Uh, we need to transition to a place where if you are buying from a store, you know that it's regulated, you know that there's quality control. That's really best for, for the consumer, but also it's better for the state because um, we ensure that we have tax revenue and, and other controls are in place. And like you said, ultimately more fair for the people with those actual licenses. Absolutely. Uh, I want to talk uh, composting a bit. I know there's a pilot program underway in Queens right now, and you're pushing for a similar program uh, to come to your borough of Manhattan. Yeah, it's just so important that we stop putting so much organic material into our waste. It winds up in landfills, it contributes to climate change when it decomposes. Uh, and about a third of what New Yorkers are throwing away now are organics. It's food waste and other things. We're way behind on this. We were behind before the pandemic, and we had a big setback when the programs were scaled back. Um, but I'm really excited about what's happening in Queens. There's a, a program in place there where uh, composting is not just an option. It's, it's, it is the default offered in every single building in the borough. It's already diverted millions of pounds of organics from the waste stream. It's been very successful. It's really not that expensive. And we wanted in Manhattan. I was really uh, excited to sign a letter with nine, uh, my fellow nine elected city council members from Manhattan. We wanted to go borough wide. We wanted to go citywide uh, for our environment uh, and for other reasons. This should be the standard practice. New Yorkers are demanding it. Let's make it available in every building in Manhattan and beyond. Yeah, and Mark, before I let you go, uh, it seems everyone's talking about pickleball, everyone's playing pickleball, and, you know, the sport itself has people so crazed, and we're only continuing to see those arguments develop on our west side playgrounds where, you know, parents uh, say that pickleball players are taking up too much space and taking it away from their kids. Your thoughts on this? Well, it's a wonderful sport. I'm, I'm glad that New Yorkers are getting out there and getting active. It's, it's wonderful for, for public health and community. But, you know, every inch of our parks is precious, and uh, they're often competing uses. And so uh, we have to be careful that we're not crowding out um, other uses of playgrounds, like for young people uh, that need that public space. So the Parks Department has put in place a plan where they have designated, um, they've actually converted some handball courts at J.J. Walker Playground in the West Village exclusively for pickleball. So there's a place people can go to. It's not far. I think that's a good solution to ensure that we don't crowd out kids from using their playgrounds, but we do create designated space for pickleball. There's a lot of competition out there for our parks. We have to be very deliberate and how we design the space, and I think this is the right step. Yeah, and I'm sure we will continue to see pickleball courts pop up in the uh, months and years to come. You're going to get a lot of calls and emails on this issue, I can tell you for sure. Yes, people are definitely hyped about the sport of pickleball. Uh, Mark Levine, Manhattan Borough President, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you, Steph. Great.